Hello my friends, this is Dr. Kazmi and you're watching my YouTube channel. Uh, today we are going to talk about the approach to syncope in the pediatric age group. Syncope simply means a brief loss of consciousness and it is a very common condition in the pediatric age group. In our clinical practice, uh, on a daily basis, we do see cases uh, who are brought with this uh, presentation of uh, being collapsed while at school or while playing or simply uh, doing something at home and usually there is a, a very high parental anxiety and uh, parental concern associated with this condition because uh, most of the parents they think that their child might be having a very serious underlying condition when they present with collapse or syncope. So as the definition goes, very simple definition, it simply means a uh, brief loss of consciousness. Now, what are the reasons uh, for a child who usually presents with collapse, uh, as we call it, syncope? Um, there are uh, three uh, categories uh, of reasons that can co present with collapse. But please keep it in mind that um, this uh, syncope or collapse can sometimes be associated with uh, what we call as uh, exertional syncope, where a child has been playing or has been running or has been doing some activity and they collapse. So we call it exertional uh, syncope or it might be associated with uh, exertional uh, breathlessness as well. So sometimes while uh, they are playing or when they are doing some activities, apart from being collapsing, they might have some uh, difficulty in breathing as well. So these things are usually associated with one another. So syncope, exertional syncope, exertional dyspnea, uh, they could be related with one another. Now there are three uh, uh, categories uh, which are uh, you know uh, responsible for causing syncope. So the first category, the most common, is vasovagal. The second uh, category are cardiac reasons for syncope, and the third one is the neurological uh, reasons. So uh, by and large, the most common uh, is vasovagal. So vasovagal syncope simply means that there is an overactivation of uh, the vagal system. Now. 80 to 90 percent of the children presenting with syncope in the pediatric emergency department usually have got an vasovagal underlying condition uh, while the other 10 percent can be or can be either cardiac reasons or neurological reasons now let's uh, go through them one by one so uh, we will take the uh, vasovagal one so vasovagal is the most common and is usually responsible for 80 to 90 percent of the syncope cases presenting in the uh, pediatric practice. Now most of the times uh, the reason for vagal overactivation are emotional reasons. So a child who is unhappy or who is overwhelmed with emotions, uh, either they are happy emotions or sad emotions can suddenly pass out and that is because all of a sudden you know this uh, the rush of emotions can can lead to overactivation of the the vagal system, the parasympathetic system, and that leads to uh, bradycardia, that further leads to a decrease in cardiac output, and the child can pass for a few seconds, for a few minutes. It can also uh, occur because of prolonged standing. So uh, usually adolescents in UK who are usually working in stores um, as salesperson or whose work uh, involves standing for a prolonged period of time, they can simply pass out because of uh, overactivation of the vagal center. So prolonged standing is another one reason for uh, vagal overactivation. It can also occur because of uh, hot and ambient temperatures, especially in warm uh, environment, especially uh, if a child is in uh, the bath and uh, there's a lot of steam around him. So sometimes while you know taking a shower, they can simply uh, collapse for a brief period of time. Similarly, unexpected uh, frightening experiences. A child who is suddenly frightened because of, a, let's say, a thunderstorm or because of a sudden loud noise or uh, because, of, because of different reasons. As kids, children are playing so they can get scared for one reason or the other reason. So all of a sudden, this can lead to an overactivation of the vagal system and they can collapse. Uh, please keep it in mind that uh, vasovagal um, syncope uh, primarily because the reason is vagal overactivation and the vagal overactivation leads to uh, bradycardia and this bradycardia leads to decrease in cardiac output and this cardiac output simply means that there is less blood going to the brain which simply means that the brain is getting less oxygen 
So what happens as these kids they collapse down, uh, they can have brief uh, seizures as well. So during that two or three minutes, while the child is, is has collapsed, they can have shaky movements of the body as well. So parents are very much concerned that the child passed out and then that he had uh, seizures. These seizures are not neurological in, in, in origin. These seizures are vagal in origin and uh, they are known as innocent seizures. Uh, uh, they are not present in each and every case, but uh, some of the cases they do present with, with seizures which are brief, which are uh, not long lasting. And uh, the hallmark of uh, vagal syncope is that uh, it occurs for a brief period of time and the child comes back very quickly. So he would take like, you know, minutes, seconds to minutes to come back. And usually when you ask them that what had happened, they would say, oh, well, you know, I was playing and then all of a sudden I felt dizzy, I felt nauseous or I felt sick and then uh, I just passed out. I don't know what happened, but I just passed out. And then when I woke up, so the my friends or the paramedics were, you know, um, responding to me. So uh, the thing is that these are brief attacks. These are because of vagal overactivation. They can be associated with seizures. But as I said, there are usually reasons, prolonged standing, uh, emotional overdrive, uh, you know, being frightened uh, and some other conditions they can be associated with uh, with vagal syncope. And as I told you, they are always very brief uh, attacks. And sometimes in certain cases, they can be repetitive in nature. There will be a past history of vasovagal syncopes as well. Then, uh, Coming to the uh, cardiac and neurological reasons. So cardiac and neurological reasons are serious reasons and they are responsible in around 10 to 20% uh, of the cases. So 10 to 20% of the cases, uh, the reasons are either cardiac in origin or neurological in origin. Now let's take the, uh, the, the category of the cardiac reasons for uh, syncope. Now cardiac reasons are very serious reasons and in majority of these cases, when I say majority, more than 95% of the cardiac uh, causes of syncope, they are uh, associated with activity or exercise. So usually these are those kids who are doing some form of activity. So either they will be doing their PE in the school or either they will be running, playing football, rugby, any other type of activity, swimming, you know, playing around, you know, in which they, 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 they've got a lot of exertion. So in those cases, all of a sudden while playing or running or doing these activities uh, they would simply pass out it might be associated with exertional breathlessness as well you know sometimes they do not present with frank collapse we call it pre syncope they feel like they are about to they're about to pass out but they actually haven't passed out and what happens usually they would also they would also you know uh, complain of uh, some form of exertional dyspnea. So they would say, well, you know, our stamina has recently reduced and while we try to play, we feel like we are not able to play that much. We don't feel we have that energy. We quickly, we, we go out of breath. We are not able, we have to stop. And, you know, we, we, we become breathless, we become dizzy. So all these types of associated, especially if they are um, associated with activity, exertional activities, then you sh must think of cardiac reason. Sometimes it can be associated with chest pain as well, but chest pain is not a prerequisite for uh, cardiac reasons of syncope. In majority of the cases, they do not have any history of chest pain. They simply say they, be, they, they have got exertional dyspnea and they simply pass out uh, while doing any activity. And the most important thing is usually when they pass out and when they come back, again, they pass out for a brief period of time, but when they come back, they usually have got no recall of the event so they simply say well i don't i don't remember what ha had happened so again uh, if somebody says that they passed out while playing activity plus minus it was associated with some form of existential dyspnea and they have no recall of the event whether it has occurred for the first time or whether it has been occurring again and again one should take that very seriously because that could simply mean that there is an underlying cardiac reason for uh, the syncope and it needs to be investigated accordingly now coming to neurological one. Now neurological one uh, or neurological reasons of syncope usually are associated with some form of aura. So they might be having uh, this deja vu phenomenon or they might feel like something is coming. They might feel a bit odd, tingly sensations, flashes of light, and then all of a sudden they pass out. It's usually associated with seizures. And um, the hallmark of this condition is that they take a long time to come back. So, uh, you know, in contrast to uh, 
vasovagal syncope and cardiac syncope the neurological syncope is associated with seizures and there is usually a postictal period so in this postictal period the child would be drowsy or might be having some altered level of consciousness they might be hypotonic or might be hypotonic but usually there is some time uh, period you know which they take to come back so usually the 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 overall uh, time period to fully recover is a bit prolonged as compared to vasovagal and uh, cardiac uh, syncope so that is uh, how we can clinically differentiate between these three forms of syncope that is the vasovagal the cardiac and the uh, neurological reason of syncope now how do we manage this thing now in pre-hospital uh, management of these conditions normally which is usually done by paramedics or you know uh, somebody who is passing by uh, abc approach uh, you know is the standard approach so if a child who has collapsed it's always important to look at the airways to see that the airways is patent if you feel like the airways is not patent then obviously the airway opening maneuvers have to be done like the um, had uh, tilt and chin lift, jaw thrust, depending on the age group. And uh, if there is issue with breathing, then obviously at pre-hospital level, mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, in hospital, bag and mask uh, ventilation, or putting them on high oxygen, blah, blah. So they have to be done. Uh, so circulation is all important. So one must uh, feel for a pulse that the pulse is present. And uh, uh, if the pulse is not present, then the standard CPR procedure should be uh, started. So normally, mo in most of the cases, by the time they are uh, brought back to the uh, or brought into the uh, children's emergency department, they are usually uh, awake. They are responding, so they don't need any uh, APC approach. But the important thing is, when they present after the triage, a few things have to be done. So those uh, uh, things that have to be done is, uh, you know, the first uh, important thing is doing a blood gas followed by a blood pressure uh, reading, ideally in standing and lying position, and most important, doing an ECG. It is very important because blood gas would tell you if there has been any electrolyte imbalances. Uh, it would also tell you about the blood glucose levels because sometimes kids who have not eaten or skipped their meals, uh, they can become hypoglycemic and they can also pass out because of uh, hypoglycemia and they can have seizures because of hypoglycemia as well. So blood gas is a very important screening uh, tool that can give you a lot of information. Blood pressure uh, would uh, give you added information about postural hypertension and things like that. And ECG is, is important because ECG can point to uh, any uh, underlying cardiac reason. So, for example, if you uh, see features of uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, then obviously you have to further work up, uh, you know, that child with, with an echocardiogram. Or if there are other features of long uh, QT uh, syndrome, then again, you have to uh, refer these kids uh, to pediatric cardiology. So, it's very important that you do blood gas, blood pressure, and ECG. It's also very important that you should uh, always look for any underlying precipitating factor like anemia and pregnancy. So, you know, kids, uh, though anemia is not that much common in the UK, uh, though we do get, often we do get kids who have got some underlying hematological problems, usually from South uh, Asian uh, background, and uh, they can pass out repeatedly and in that case anemia is a precipitating factor so look for anemia and especially in adolescent girls always check for uh, pregnancy because uh, there might be a concealed pregnancy and uh, that might be taxing the body too much and they these girls can pass out and they might themselves even don't know that they are pregnant so it's very important to look for anemia and pregnancy in these kids um, if needed, like if there are some, uh, if the history is pointing towards a cardiac reason or a neurological uh, condition, or if you find something on the ECG or on the physical examination, uh, you need to follow up your basic blood gas, blood pressure and ECG with a chest x-ray, with routine uh, blood chemistry. And if needed, these kits can be referred for an echocardiogram or an electroencephalography uh, if you think that is a neurological case or whatever the case may be. So it's very important, the ABCs, one they present the hospital, again, I would reiterate blood gas, blood pressure, and ECG. And then based on your examination, as I said, don't forget about uh, anemia, don't forget about pregnancy and adolescent girls. And if needed, follow up with a chest X-ray and a pediatric or a pediatric cardiology referral uh, if needed. So that is how we manage 
most of the cases of pediatric syncope. Now I will follow it up with a few questions uh, so that uh, you know that the, the concept becomes further clarified in your minds. So we go through this question and this question says a 15 year old basketball player presents with shortness of breath that has recently been hindering his ability to play. So he's a 15 year old, he's an adolescent and uh, he presents with shortness of breath. So there is an exertional dyspnea uh, because he's not able to play and he has got some mild chest pain as well. And he feels of lightheadedness, so some form of presyncope, but denies ever losing consciousness. So again, you see, he has not he's not presenting with syncope, he is presenting with exertional dyspnea and presyncope. So he feels like he would pass out, though he 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 hasn't ever actually passed out. So he wants to know when he can go back to playing for his school team because um, let's say his, uh, his, his his coach is not allowing him to play, or his GP told him not to play till. Uh, they, they they actually find out the reason why he's got exertional dyspnea. Okay, so let's go through the the questions. Some of the questions which uh, you know usually are asked in the exams that will, like for example, no matter what is the most likely diagnosis. Now the most likely diagnosis for this condition because this is an exertional dyspnea, okay, and it is leading to limitation, uh, you know, in his abilities to play. So it's very important. I mean, obviously it looks like uh, asthma. But there is no past medical history of, uh, you know, breathlessness or difficulty in breathing. And this is happening, you know, specifically while he's playing. So the most likely diagnosis is a cardiac reason. And the cardiac, the most common cardiac condition which causes that is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which was previously also known as hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. So uh, HCM is the most likely diagnosis in this case. So what is the most common symptom? So the most common symptom is exertional dyspnea or exertional uh, syncope. So remember exertional dyspnea and exertional syncope or collapse are the most common symptoms. Some people think about chest pain. Remember, chest pain is not that common. It is usually exertional dyspnea or exertional syncope, which are the most common symptoms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or uh, other conditions like aortic stenosis. What is the uh, best initial test? So the best initial test is echo cardiogram. So echo would actually uh, give you the diagnosis. What is the best initial therapy? Beta blockers. So beta blockers are the hallmark of treatment for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What worsen their symptoms? Remember, if you put them on diuretics, that would always lead to worsening of their symptoms. So diuretics are a no-no in this condition. So remember, diuretics worsen their condition. Diuretics are contraindicated in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a reason of cardiac uh, syncope. Uh, similarly, what medications are contraindicated? Again, the answer is the same thing. That is diuretics. What is the most appropriate preventive step? So preventive step, these kids uh, need to have an implantable defibrillator. So the most appropriate preventive step to prevent any future, uh, you know, attacks of uh, ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation is to have an implantable defibrillator uh, what is the most appropriate therapy the most appropriate therapy is beta blockers okay so the second question is that a 16 years old boy has been brought in by paramedics uh, with a history of uh, loss of consciousness which lasted two to three minutes uh, he says that he was in a local swimming pool and as he dived inside the pool, he lost consciousness and he was rescued by his uh, pool instructors. He regained consciousness after two to three minutes and now he says that he has got no recall of whatever had happened with him. He's brought into the children's emergency department. Um, uh, he has been triaged and the doctor does his blood gas. Uh, he takes his blood pressure and he uh, records a 12-day ECG. Uh, and the data shows that his blood gas, the pH is 7.35, PO2 is 6, uh, PCO2 is also 6, uh, uh, lactate is 1, glucose is 5.3 millimoles, sodium 138, potassium 4.2 and bicarbonate is 22.8, blood pressure is 115 by 70 millimeters of mercury 
and ECG shows a normal sinus rhythm with no acute changes, no excess deviation, and no electrical evidence of left or right ventricular hypertrophy. A chest X-ray is also requested, and the chest X-ray shows that it is within the normal limits. There is no cardiomegaly, and the cardiophrenic angles are normal. The cost, uh, uh, the the lung fields are also clear. So now the question is, what is the cause of syncope in this child? Now the blood gas is absolutely fine. So you see there are no electrolyte imbalances. The blood pressure is also fine. Strangely, the ECG is showing everything fine. So there's a normal sinus rhythm, no acute changes, no deviation, and no electrical evidence of left or right ventricular hypertrophy. But again, if you focus here now on this questions, so he lost consciousness lasting two to three minutes. And this happened while he was exerting himself. So he was doing a sort of sports that was he was diving and he has no recall of whatever had happened. ECG is also fine. Now this shows that there is a cardiac reason for the syncope. Though despite the fact that the chest x-ray is also within normal limits, you can't see any evidence of cardiomegaly and the ECG for the time being is also normal. It is because usually most of these cases of cardiac, symphony, uh, cardiac syncope are because of long QT syndrome, but you will only find long QT during exertion. By the time the child is fine and uh, he has rested, the QT interval is back to normal. So in this particular case, the reason for syncope is cardiac in nature. So that's what I wanted to focus that whenever the syncope is associated with no recall of uh, events. And uh, the other thing is that it happened while the child was exerting, whether it's the first time or whether there is a repeated history of uh, you know uh, loss of consciousness while the child is playing or doing some strenuous activity, then you should think of cardiac reasons. Uh, let's move on to question number three and that is a 13 years old girl is brought in by ambulance after she suddenly collapsed at school and during that time she was talking to her friends in the corridor as she collapsed she had a shaky movements of the body which lasted two minutes and she was very pale during that episode by the time the paramedics arrived she was up and normal and uh, she was talking again finger uh, uh, glucose was done which was five millimoles per liter she says that she had a similar attack six months ago as well uh, and she also says that while this happened she felt nauseous and dizzy before she collapsed to the floor a blood gas is done ecg is done and blood pressure is also recorded everything is normal now if you focus on in this question so what you see is that she suddenly collapsed at school while talking to the friends in the corridor now this lasted for two minutes and there were uh, shaky uh, episode as well. The, the child has an apparent seizure during this time. Blood glucose was normal and she felt dizzy and nauseous before collapsing. ECG is fine, blood pressure is fine and sometimes on an ECG you might find sinus bradycardia as well and if that is a condition the reason is vasovagal syncope. So vasovagal syncope usually happens while they are standing, while there's a emotional overdrive, or while the MBS is hot, they feel dizzy, they feel uh, weak, they can feel sick as well, and they can just collapse and they come back very quickly. They can have a sort of a seizure like activity in between. And if you do an ECG, most of the time the ECG is normal, but sometimes you can find sinus predicardia. So you will see a heartbeat which is around 50, 55, but usually is around. 60 uh, but can be less than 60 as well so if it is associated with sinus predicardia but now on examination the child is otherwise fine it's come back the diagnosis is vasovagal syncope so with these three questions we have tried to uh, further explain the concept of uh, uh, syncope in children so once again to summarize all this remember majority of the reasons of syncope in children are vasovagal which uh, you know accounts for 80 to 90 percent of the cases that can be brought about by emotional overdrive prolonged standing uh, warm ambience uh, unexpected uh, frightening experiences it can be associated with seizures it's usually very brief in nature and you would you might find sinus predicaria on ecg cardiac is usually associated with activity uh, it might be associated with exertion dyspnea as well again the episodes are brief and usually the hallmark of this condition is that uh, once they come back, they have got no recall of the event. 
ECG might show something or might not show. But if that, if you are suspecting cardiac reason and the ECG is normal, uh, they would need some form of telemetry or they would need uh, at least an echocardiogram to rule out uh, underlying structural heart problems. And neurological, usually they are a bit longer in nature, though the event itself might be a small one, but usually they take time to come back. So there would be a post period where the child might be hypotonic or might be hypertonic and uh, it's usually associated with seizures, uh, generalized or focal, and uh, there could be loss of consciousness with some tongue biting and incontinence as well. And if that is the case, then you uh, need to book them up for the uh, a neurology clinic or uh, refer them uh, to have an EEG done. So this was in brief uh, a small lecture on uh, causes of uh, syncope in children. Any questions? Uh, any comments just put it down in the comment section below and uh, i will try my level best to get back to you as soon as possible have a good day bye bye